fighting the invisible, the need for a new leadership mindset is going to be evolved through a series of... Can I go on? Because I hear some uh, background music here. Okay, so uh, I will introduce the topic again to you. Today's topic is on managing the invisible, the need for a new leadership mindset. And to present this to us today, we have very privileged to have Dr. Kais, who is the president of the Institute Excelsior International, who has organized these four days of the summit in which we are sharing and learning from professionals how we can enhance our coaching experiences. Now, Dr. Kais is a PhD. That's why we call him a doctor because he has earned his PhD in the human resource management. He is a passionate researcher and an author, and you would have seen a lot of his publications in the leadership journals around the world. Now, with 20 years plus of HR consulting experience, he is also an ICF PCC level coach. And today he will be sharing with us a lot of great insights about the new leadership mindset. So over to you now, Dr. Kais. Thank you uh, for that wonderful introduction. So thank you, Jess. Uh, I, uh, I start by sharing. Uh, so I prepared some, some slides for you. Let me see if I can share them. Okay. No, section is okay. So uh, thank you again and welcome uh, everyone. So I'd like to start my my presentation by uh, welcoming all of you. Uh, I can see some of my my friends here. So thank you for being here. So uh, to start, I begin with this, uh, this quote. It's uh, of uh, Socrates and he's saying, the only thing, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. And I'm not quite sure that I know that. So I'm not here to give lessons. I'm not here to enroll in the top down uh, knowledge sharing process. I'm just here to share my my thoughts and invite you to share your own. So I wanted to be, this is the premise of uh, this webinar is, so I wanted to be a conversational and knowledge sh sharing space. I'll be holding this, this space. So do you agree with me? If you uh, agree on this, please on the chat, on the, on the, the chat box, please say yes. Yes, Dr. Guys, we agree yes, with you, and uh, I will be. <laughs> so, just Jane, then uh, Annabella, and so I'm happy to see all of these uh, reactions. So that's actually what we uh, we want to have. So really, an interactive space. So I'd like to uh, hear uh, from you all. So we're just here to uh, share our own thoughts and uh, come up with really uh, uh, supreme, uh, so uh, um, I won't say really, um, uh, so uh, there is no really absolute reality. So each one of us has his own reality and we're here to uh, challenge ourselves and uh, no matter what I say, so the most important thing is, uh, is your own perception. How do you feel about it and how do you really look uh, at everything we, we're going to share. So the most important thing is your own thoughts and your own ideas. And I, I'd like to hear from, uh, from you on, uh, on that. So let me start by asking you a few uh, questions. So my, my first question, so if I take you back to uh, two years ago, so, and I ask you uh, this, so uh, if I ask you to, uh, uh, to, to, to predict what's going on now, 
So uh, uh, what would, uh, or how much on a scale of zero to 10, uh, would you have been able to, to, to predict what, what is going now? So if you, you can give a score on that. So just two years ago and uh, looking or predicting the future, predicting what's, what's going on now. So what would be your, uh, how uh, uh, precise, how accurate your, your prediction would be of uh, what's going on now. So I can see a lot of uh, uh, scores, Jane uh, zero, a lot of zeros, <laughs> Mona zeros, uh, Karim one, two, three, four, Rahlen, so five. Uh, the, the best score I think is the highest one is five, the lowest is, is zero. So I'd like to ask you a, a second question. So my, my second question is the, the following. So on a scale of zero to 10, uh, how long do you think that the consequences of what's going on uh, uh, now, uh, I mean by that the COVID-19 and its impact will, will stay with us? So on a score of uh, zero, zero is low and 10 is, is high. Would it stay for uh, short term, for long term? So if it is for short term, zero, or if it is for long term, uh, uh, so uh, a higher score, eight, four, never back to normal. Yeah, so it's five or six. So from what, what I hear from you, so it's really, uh, it's gonna be staying for, uh, stay for, uh, for so long. Another question, so. Uh, my third question is, is the following. On a scale of zero to 10, how long uh, or how much, let, let's say, say this, this way, how much do you think what happened impacted your life? Zero. Uh, really little impact, uh, then a huge impact. So uh, eight, seven, nine, I think 50%, and then so, so uh, Ahlem eight, Mona uh, nine, uh, Karib eight. So I, I like your interaction. That's exactly what um, uh, I uh, really expected from you. So I like this really interactive environment. So you see uh, three questions and this, this is uh, my uh, really takeaway of it. And uh, I, I'd like to hear from, from you. So my takeaway is this. So there are three things. I asked about three things. I asked about uh, your capability of predicting what, what is going right now, uh, the impact, and uh, uh, also uh, how long it would be really uh, staying with us. And these three things actually what char characterizes, uh, so what, what is going now actually um, is or was unpredictable. Uh, it's of huge impact and it will, will stay for so long. So it creates a new reality and that's what we call a crisis. So a crisis has these three characteristics. So it's something difficult or really uh, almost impossible to predict. It's something with, that changes our, our life and for so long. So, uh, Just give us a moment. I think we cannot hear uh, Dr. Kais anymore. Uh, see, screen seems to have frozen. Yes, there seems to be an internet connection uh, challenge that has come in. Okay, so uh, very, very interesting that he brings in three questions which uh, start us to think about uh, how this crisis has actually opened up 
our mindset to consider the unpredictable part of our lives. Um, as, as a question was asked about how had anybody even thought of how our lives changed because of COVID. And um, I, I read an interesting comment from Avni that uh, not too much of an impact because it is surprising that um, she finds that it's more positive to be more with the family. Um, and uh, is there anyone else who has had a positive experience from being uh, home and working from home? Please feel free to yes, unmute actually. and there. Okay, so tell us more. Uh, for me, it, it is a positive experience because I have a baby and uh, I found uh, that I can manage my work and uh, mm -hmm. being uh, with the baby at the same time. So I see it a positive uh, experience, but, but when I go back to office for, uh, I, I went back to office only for one month. I felt that I missed really the environment of the office. So yeah, it is, uh, it is a um, good experience um, on a family and the, the way you manage your work, but uh, to be with your colleagues and also at this point we miss a lot. Yes, that is so true. And, and um, for people like me, I would also like to chime in that I love working from home because it makes me feel very productive. Um, I don't know how many of you can agree with this, that when I get into the zone of wanting to read, then I can just concentrate and read for an hour that I can assign for myself. vis a -vis when you're in the office environment, there's somebody coming by your table to have a coffee or chat or something, you know what I mean? So uh, it has also been a quite a positive thing. But in the real world, uh, where uh, the reality of... Uh, uh, you know, meeting the business KPIs and um, uh, some of the businesses have had a big toll because they were so dependent on the normal way the functionality of uh, the organization was running and everybody knew what to do when. And there was some sense of uh, calm and predictability knowing that uh, in the near future, they would be meeting a certain level of KPIs or you know, the business would go on. Uh, with, with the way the disruption has become unpredictable, it is definitely a crisis that we have on hand. Um, hello, uh, Jess. Yes, yes, hey. hello, Dr. Guys. Yes, we I'm, were just I'm so sorry for, uh, for that. So my computer uh, went off, so... Uh, <laughs> That, that, that was unpredictable. But no worries at all. We understand. So we were, we were, could, we are could, back with you. Could, could we qualify that as a crisis? Based on the yes. thing that, no, it's not a crisis. <laughs> because it's not long lasting and uh, it's not really with uh, a huge impact. So three things to. Uh, <laughs> so I'd like to, to ask you, while I'm really uh, uh, waiting for, uh, for my computer to, to get back my, my presentation, so I'm using another one now. So that's plan B. So I'd like to ask you this, this question. So uh, where crises are coming from? What causes crisis? So, and I, I'd like to, to hear from all of you. So let me uh, uh, get your answers on, on the chat. So. Where the crisis are coming from? Internet issues, guys. Internet issues, but it's not a crisis. So it's <laughs> something to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, a challenge, maybe, but, but not a crisis. So not being ready, Mona, I feel for low energy. Uh, so speaking about, uh, so if you uh, really take what's going on as a case study. So uh, the coronavirus and uh, uh, some uh, political, economical also crisis. So where th they are coming from? Uh, challenging the norms, just saying uh, low energy. If you're not being ready, when unexpected events, 
Um, so uh, what if I, I, I tell you this? What if I tell you this? Crises are really part of our life. They are actually, uh, uh, I, I would say, normal things to, to happen. So I, I don't know whether you heard of this before or no, but we call it the law of rhythm or, or the law of cycles or also the law of seasons. So uh, and, uh, it's, it's really, life is, is a cycle, it's seasons. Sometimes it's up and sometimes it's, it's down. So we go through these, uh, so sometimes it's, uh, we, we, we really enjoy uh, successful moments. We're really uh, successful. Our uh, uh, business is really uh, uh, thriving. And uh, after a while, something happens and uh, it changes completely the, the situation. So it's really something. And uh, it's not about when, when we talk about crisis, it's not about just about health crisis. It's not just about uh, economical, political crisis. It's not just about macro-level crisis, it's also about micro-level crisis. So uh, let me ask you uh, on a personal level. So uh, looking back, looking to your uh, life, to the experience you've been through. So life, was it easy for you? Let me, let me get your answers. So do you think that Life is smooth, it goes without any challenges, or you've been through many challenges, many, many. So let me let me hear from you. No way, <laughs> A lot of challenges. Life is interesting when we have ups and downs. Yes, just so many, many changes. Yeah, so it's part of of uh, our uh, our life. So we, we cannot. As you said, we cannot live without without uh, changes and without crisis. And really, to uh, illustrate that, I just remind you of our growth cycle. Just just remember this: our growth cycle. So we move from our uh, uh, our uh, infancy uh, infancy to uh, uh, to. Uh, uh, adulthood to uh, uh, before that to uh, adolescence to adulthood to uh, the late adulthood and between these life phases so is it easy the transition is, is it easy let me let me see james said learn early life experiences with the uh, mobile family lifestyle created the foundation to be Adaptable and flexible and life. It's about ebb and, and flow here. Yeah. So let me remind you of these really uh, life or growth set cycles. So the transition is really it's not tough. Just just remember your your kids while they are growing. So when they they reach that adolescence phase, so it's really a crisis, a time of crisis for them. They are really getting challenged with their identity. Uh, uh, really uh, willing to uh, uh, willing to uh, shape their uh, their identity to know uh, the purpose of their their life and really uh, they, they uh, go through many experiences and that's exactly what shapes their their character what build their their character and their personality so crisis is part of our let me ask you this question put this way crisis are uh, uh, are they something positive or or negative? How do you look at crisis? How do you see crisis in, in our life? Are they something positive or negative? What do you think? And now I'm managing a crisis. I'm opening another computer and <laughs> trying to recover my, my presentation. <laughs> so uh, I feel it's something positive. Selma also is something positive. So neutral, I mean, they, they are just what they are. Opportunity for good change, crisis are the reasons of moving ahead. Uh, positive, 100% uh, Rivka, thanks for that. Positive vibes coming from Rafael Kreis, 
Crises are uh, the process of growing uh, up. Yes, Ahlem. So it let me uh, see bigger, usually negative, uh, Debbie. Uh, crisis is uh, the other side of uh, the opportunity. So uh, your comment reminded me of something, uh, the Chinese uh, definition of uh, crisis. So it's twofold, it's uh, two sides. When uh, they talk about crisis, the meaning is uh, challenges, uh, threats, and opportunities. So crisis is neither positive, it's neither positive, uh, nor negative. It's our way, and this is the first lesson of today's uh, presentation. So the first, my first takeaway is that crises are neither positive nor negative. It's what we make of it. It's what we make of it uh, becomes something positive or negative. And it starts with our perception. How, we, how do we look at crisis so uh, and crises are meant to be uh, are there to to help us grow without crisis the crisis when, when you hit the crisis it means that you're really up to to uh, uh, to change to uh, to start a new phase in in your life and if you look at your life if you look at your background your the experience you've been through so uh, it wasn't easy. And uh, if you look at your successes before your successes, there were um, uh, times that it was really uh, tough and challenging for, 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 for you. And you overcame these, uh, these situations to, to become uh, tougher, to become, um, uh, to, to, to become uh, really more resilient and, uh, and really uh, uh, Successful to achieve what you achieve. So this is my first, uh, my first takeaway is that crises are here to uh, help us uh, hit a higher level of self awareness and become, become better. So now let me ask you uh, this question while I'm recovering my, my presentation. So, what was the consequence of uh, the crisis we've been through, the COVID-19 on businesses? So now we're talking about. We're talking business, we're talking about uh, the workplace, organizations. So what was the main consequences of the COVID-19? So let me hear from you. Awakening, Kai, Christ. Go ahead. So if there is anyone who'd like to, to share us, we agreed upon uh, the beginning. So the space is yours. The floor is yours. So this is, I'm just really holding the space for you to, to share your ideas. Go ahead. So if there is anyone who'd like to, to share, go ahead. It's an awakening, Christ. It's awakening, Christ. I like the word. Um, yeah. How, how is that? Tell me more about that. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry, what did you say? Tell me more about that. Oh, yes, it's, it's an awakening because it's a wake up call to really, um, uh, everyone's had a change and um, everyone's had a completely different lifestyle and everyone's had a chance to reflect and be by themselves much more than we would have ever otherwise been by ourselves. And many of us have now no choice but to really self-reflect and look at ourselves and 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 sometimes that can be a bit confronting that people have got things happening in their families and their lives that people are escaping from by working so hard but finally covid helps us really come close to it and work on it yeah in terms of business so this is yeah so i like what you said so um, you're really approaching positively what's going on and you said so it lets us think deeply on what's going on. So we can step back and see how uh, we're impacting our uh, environment and how uh, our impact and our environment also is impacting our, our life. So the first step is about getting more awareness about that. But speaking about businesses, how the COVID-19 impacted businesses? Was it a positive or a negative impact? And what, what changed? What, what, what are the things that change for, for businesses? 
I can share. Um, one think, of the, sorry, Avni, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, I think for most businesses, it's been a very difficult impact. Um, uh, it had a positive impact on my business, but I think for most, it's very negative. Please go ahead, Jess. Yeah. So I was going to talk about um, how COVID has actually brought uh, to the reality that we are all absolutely connected globally. So if there is something that's happening in one part of the world, let it be a political situation or, uh, you know, environmental challenges or even uh, issues that came with uh, Black lives, it is not something that we can just close an eye and sit about and do nothing about it. Uh, I think it has, while I agree with some, some of the things that are said that there was an impact on the business, but there is a level of awareness to the consciousness of us all as uh, people, as human beings, as uh, how can we imagine a life where similar fellow beings are being treated differently and that is something I think uh, really resonates with me because even yesterday there was a, um, a scenario in Canada which has brought up another level of um, awakening for all of us as to what is it that I'm doing here now which can have a positive effect on other people and other things uh, on a global level. Great. So. Great. So thank you, uh, Jess. So uh, uh, you share the same point with Avni. It's more about awareness. And I think this summit is one of uh, the proofs that we're really uh, talking more about uh, the new reality and what's going on within, uh, in, uh, within businesses and how trust now is really, uh, really important. So I think uh, one of the consequences of this that we're talking more about deeper thing it's not about and this is actually part of uh, what i'm talking about today it's not about the visible it's about the invisible it's about what is really beneath the surface i managed to get through the crisis i recovered my computer my presentation and uh, thank you for helping me in doing that i applaud you all of all of you so uh, i keep going with the, with my presentation let me share again my uh, my presentation so uh, you see, we can weather the storm together. Together we're pumped. <laughs> and I think we did it because we, we trust each other. So this is really uh, something amazing. We haven't expected this and uh, it happened for a purpose and the purpose is here. So it's really a real proof of, of the power of, of trust. Thank you uh, for all for, uh, for this. So let me uh, share uh, again my, my presentation. So, uh, I was saying that we, we, we talked about uh, crisis as, uh, and we said, so it's really natural thing. And if we look at these statistics, so uh, crisis uh, have been always part of our life. So it's really something happening uh, everywhere and, and now. So it's part of our uh, growth and uh, as human beings and uh, Many, many, uh, so uh, I, I'll skip this, uh, this part. So uh, to move directly to uh, the conclusion of the first part. So the conclusion of the fir first part is this. Crises are part of our life. They happen for a reason. And what's that, that reason is growth. So we cannot grow if we stay with the same thing. If we uh, use the same patterns, the same thinking, to uh, really uh, solve the same issues the same way, so we won't grow. So we need to change things to move ahead. And we need to, in order to, to change things, some, sometimes we need to, uh, uh, we, we do it the hard way. So we need that call. Thanks. Uh, uh, we need to feel that uh, we're doing something, uh, I, I uh, I don't want to say in the wrong way. So we need to ch change something to, to move ahead. And the Christ comes to remind us of that. We need to change uh, things to, to move ahead. So uh, 
The consequences of the, the COVID-19, many consequences, so macro level, so it's about employment, uh, the, the, the rates of employment uh, increasing, it's about also the incomes going down. When we talk about the micro level, we talk about businesses and uh, many changes. When we talk about businesses, real, uh, here I uh, really, uh, I want to draw your attention to three things. When we talk about businesses, we talk about three things. We talk about the organizational level, we talk about the group level, and we talk about the individual level. They are really interconnected. So if we'd like to assess the impact of COVID-19 on businesses, so the, these are the three lenses we have to look through to understand what's going on in, in businesses. Speaking about the organization, organizational level, so we see that some businesses are suffer, suffering from the crisis in terms of sales, markets, share, uh, profits. So uh, it's not the case of all the businesses. There is some differences and we'll be talking about that. Why some businesses are really able to manage the crisis better than, than others. And there, the component of the, uh, the, the invisible thing, the invisible part, the leadership, with the new mindset of leadership will be at play and will be really uh, important. So this is the first impact on, on businesses. Talking about individuals, so uh, the, the crisis is create, creating some kind of uncertainty. So looking ahead, we don't know what's going on. So, and uncertainty is really something that creates some, some stress. We become stressful. So, and with stress comes fear. And sometimes if we, uh, we, we are in that uh, fight, flight, uh, or freeze mode, so we, uh, we feel demotivated because we don't know what to do. So it creates some demotivation and uh, with that also it impacts our, our performance. That's actually at the individual uh, level. Speaking about groups also, so uh, now it, it impacts the, the group dynamic. Uh, because groups are composed of individuals. So if individuals are fearful, are, are not certain about what's going on, so it would really impact their, uh, their dynamic. There will be a lot of rumors, a lot of trust, conflicts. So this is actually the dark side of the thing. I'm not saying this is the case of all the, 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 the businesses, but it's the case of a lot of businesses. And this is the situation we'd like to avoid. And to avoid this, we need uh, what uh, really uh, I'm going to talk about, but I'd like to hear from you my recipe, my thing, how my solution to, to this is the new leadership mindset I'd be talking about and I'd like to, to hear from you. So uh, with the coronavirus, there is a new reality uh, coming uh, uh, on, on the scene and the new reality is the remote work and the remote the remote work is really challenging for, for businesses. So uh, why is it challenging? Also, because it impacts the organization, groups, and individuals. Let me explain a little bit this. So we're moving from the physical presence, the direct contact, to the virtual presence, the indirect uh, contact. And what's going with, with that? So at the organizational level, so Communication is really challenging. So we uh, saw yesterday a webinar with Fernando and Fernando was talking about the body uh, from the body language, with, which actually give us clues on your feelings, your emotions. He's, he was talking about the digital uh, body language. So uh, how you insert smileys and stuff like that. So communication is really challenging with uh, remote work. Uh, it's also about if we're really uh, not communicating in a clear way, so it gets our goals fuzzy. So we're not really clear about uh, our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, goals. And we said with, with Mary before, uh, so the presentation just before, so Mary uh, talked about this. So uh, we used to talk in corridors uh, in formal ways. So it helps us win. Uh, a lot of time now we don't have that uh, luxury luxury so uh, uh, so goals are really uh, uh, it's not that much clear if and uh, if we're missing uh, things about our goals so uh, 
it's tough to uh, it's not it's not now as easy as it used to be to uh, really uh, find a colleague and ask him about more information about that so also how to manage how to monitor how to control how to coordinate uh, how to adjust how also to evaluate our performance so every uh, thing uh, so it's now different and more challenging i'll move a little bit faster i'd like to uh, get to the third part so also we have uh, challenges on the individual level uh, as i said it's about motivation it's about new skills requirements so now i'm working remotely so i need to use uh, zoom i need to use some softwares so am i really well trained to do it so it's out of my comfort zone. It's really a new challenging situation for me. So am I able to do that? So I have my own doubts. I have my own concerns. I have my own. So would my boss, would my leadership understand of all uh, of that? So, uh, and I need also to be autonomous, to, to organize myself, get self-organized, uh, be more disciplined, uh, be more also tolerant because sometimes I'm, I'm working with my, my, my kids all around. So how can I uh, balance uh, work with, with uh, family uh, requirements? So it's really more, more challenging at the group level also. So uh, we're working in, uh, at different time zones. Uh, we're not, we don't work at the same really uh, uh, we don't have the same schedule, so it requires a lot of flexibility. So it needs tolerance. So uh, and sometimes uh, because of misunderstanding, so uh, we have uh, really conflicting situations. We need to to deal with. So what are the advantages? Or let me ask you uh, pause here a little bit and ask you this question. So looking at uh, all of these challenges. So what are the, the advantages and the disadvantages according to you uh, to uh, the remote work? So I'd like to, to hear from you. What do you think guys? Remote work, what are the, the advantages and disadvantages? The online businesses has uh, improved a lot with COVID, said Ahlin. What do you think, guys? But go ahead, Avni, if you'd like to say something, go ahead. I was trying to type, but not fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> go to. <laughs> <laughs> Advantages and disadvantages. Um, so I think one of the disadvantages is that we cannot type fast enough. <laughs> the advantage is that we can see everyone, all our friends from across the world. Yeah, great. But, um, but, but more seriously, I think the advantage is that I can see my family more often. I absolutely love that. And disadvantage is that, you know, my four-year-old, as you saw him coming a few minutes ago, you know, he, he will always come and disturb and say, can you make Lego with me? And this is happening and somebody's being unfair and blah, 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 blah. There's always something happening, you know. Um, uh, give me your phone and can I cancel every phone call that you get? So it looks like I'm canceling everybody's phone calls, but I'm not. <laughs> okay, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Um, I can see Jane also on the chat saying the advantage is better life work balance. The advantage different yes. ways to allocate time. Okay, great. I would like to add here is that I think overall there is a general sense of productivity that has increased because we are embracing a lot of the digital products which have very quickly come into the market. And uh, uh, it has become much easier now for even those um, people who have not had much experience in using computers to embrace using uh, the video conference uh, like Zoom. Um, and that has made it so much more engaging for uh, you know, students and teachers to have interactive sessions where they can use different uh, 
creative tools. Um, so I think there is some level of uh, enhancement in embracing digitalization that has also and been to me an advantage. Great, thanks for sharing, uh, Just. So I'd like to uh, give you my, my thoughts around that. It's not really an absolute truth. Uh, each one of us has own ideas. So this is my ideas. So this is what I think of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, the current situation. I can see Jane saying this advantage for some way to be out of practice in using personal skills. Yes, the new situation, Sanma says, uh, 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 the new situation arises from uh, uh, our real needs. So maybe if I understood you well, so it goes with, what, uh, with the, uh, the needs of the current situation. So this is my, my, my thoughts around that. So I think the, the opportunities, the advantages are as follows. So it's more autonomy, as uh, Avni said, so we, as Jane said, so we can uh, do things on our, uh, uh, at our pace. We can really uh, calibrate everything uh, have enjoyed that work-life uh, balance. It's about flexibility. So we're flexible, we can work at uh, our own pace, start with this and with, with that. So we can organize uh, things uh, our own way. And the, 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 the third thing is about motivation. So we get motivated, we enjoy the process. So uh, it's really more motivating for, for some people. And performance. So the outcome of that is a higher level of performance. But I, I'd like I'd like you to pay attention to this. These are the, the advantages. But, but what about the, the disadvantages? They are the same. So what it's autonomy. So I can as, as an employee, as a leadership, I don't know how to to, uh, to use that uh, autonomy. So how to deal with that? I, I used to have uh, someone telling me what to do, uh, following up with me on my schedule. So I don't know what, what to do about that. Flexibility also. So, so uh, uh, a lot of things to do. So what's the plan? So I don't know. Uh, also motivation. So no clarity, uh, no KPIs, no precise. So it impacts my, my motivation. It's, it impacts my, my performance. So what's, what is really beneficial for some, what was really an advantage for some, the businesses, it's exactly the same. So it was really uh, this is very a threat for uh, other uh, businesses. And here comes the, the conclusion. It depends on the, the business management. So uh, our second major lesson from this uh, presentation is the following. So the crisis is neither positive or negative per se. So it's, uh, it's just a stimulus. It's something outside. So, uh, but uh, its meaning depends on, on us. It depends on, on us. And here I, I recall uh, the saying of uh, uh, Anais name. She says, we don't see things as they are. We, say, we see things as we are. So whether we succeed in managing crisis or not, it depends on us. It depends on us, on our readiness. Are we ready to manage these crises to weather the storm or not, that's actually the most important, uh, the most important uh, thing. Uh, so I see some uh, comments, uh, the advantage of having the opportunity to be part of uh, conferences and meetings online. Uh, and he's saying we work more and hardly, we are working all, all, all the time. So it can be an advantage or a disadvantage. It's up to you to give it the meaning uh, you want. So, and the meaning, you want it depends on many factors it starts with the perception and what you do about that 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 perception so let's tackle the last part of this presentation is how to manage crises i'd like to to hear from you so if you're faced by uh, you're faced with a crisis so how do you manage it let me hear from you what's your strategy what's your approach how do you do to to get through a crisis so, and when we speak about crisis, it can be at different levels. Go ahead. Sorry. So, let me, let me hear from you. What are your strategies? If you're faced by, with, with a crisis, so how do you deal with that? What's your take, what's your thing?
Be adaptable, Adam said. Focus on the important priority. Justin, get support. Just, just say. Be flexible, agile, responsive to the situation, both mentally and physically, having said. You have to accept the new situation, acceptance, I like that. Get clarity on what you really need to prioritize. Wonderful. So, uh, Here's my, my thoughts around that. And uh, as I said, these are just my, my thoughts based on my ground, my background, my knowledge, but it's, they are not really absolute truth. Uh, everything is discussable, so we can discuss everything. Jane said, embrace it, acknowledge it, name it, ask for help if needed, great. So let me share with you a few strategies. So the first strategy we call them, the first type of strategies, we call them reactive strategies. So what does it mean reactive strategies is when the crisis hits, so what we do uh, right after that? Uh, agile, so my uh, uh, saying agility, I think it being agile. So that's exactly so uh, the type of reactive strategy. So kind of uh, reactive strategies. So there is really a, a well-known uh, model when it comes to managing crisis, so it's called the Gonzalez, Hero, Herrero and Pratt, uh, Pratt model. So it's of three th steps. So first diagnose, uh, then choose the appropriate strategy and then uh, implement it. But it takes time, so it's not, uh, so uh, it takes time, it's of three steps and it comes after the uh, the, the crisis. So it's really a recovery. Uh, it's really a recovery uh, strategy. Uh, we, today we talk uh, more about uh, the agility, HR agility. And uh, what's different, what makes this different, it's about the quick response. So the HR agility gives you a quick response. So you respond quickly because you build the, 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 the capabilities. So we worked on, uh, worked a lot on, on that. What I'd like to use this time to talk about is the funnel. It's not the reactive strategy. I'd like to leave you with this. So uh, before introducing the proactive strategies, I'd like to share this quote by uh, Einstein. He says, we can solve uh, problems by using the same kind of thinking. We use when we created them. So we need to change our, our thinking. And that's actually uh, one of uh, the purposes, if I uh, can say, of uh, and consequences, deep consequences of uh, crisis. So they are here to awaken us, as Adam said. So to let us think deeply and come up with new uh, perspectives. So uh, speaking about proactive strategies, I recall here uh, the work of uh, Nicholas uh, Nassim Nicholas uh, Taleb. He talks about entire fragility and. What's really interesting about the entire fragility uh, concept, it's about the, the, the capability of the entity, not just to whether the... So can you hear me? So it's our capability to thrive in crisis, when crisis, uh, uh, crisis happen. So how to get that? How to to thrive uh, uh, in in uh, in times of of crisis? It's uh, all about this philosophy. It's all about this this approach. How to do it? So this is thoughts I'd like to, to leave uh, leave you with. So it's about being able to disrupt yourself. You don't want to wait for the crisis to come to awaken you. Got the point? So you do it yourself. You disrupt yourself. You put yourself, you create what, what uh, Nicholas, Nassim Nicholas Tyler calls is to create the stresses, to be in continuous change, in permanent change. So you provoke these crises to get ready when things, when bigger things happen. So you, you create your immunity system. You develop your immunity system. So you're ready. When crises happen, you're ready because that's exactly what you're doing. So, and how you do it, practically how, how you do it, 
by really uh, provoking stressors and keep working, never settle. So uh, just remember this word, never settle. So keep really growing. And I'd like to re remind you uh, of, uh, you know, the Eisenhower matrix. You remember Eisenhower matrix, right or not? Yes or no? On the chat. Who knows about the Eisenhower matrix? I'd like to remove. you No, Afif, the Eisenhower matrix. Do you know? Do you recall this? The Eisenhower matrix, it, it's, it's about uh, the tasks, whether they are uh, important or urgent. If the tasks are important or, or urgent. So, what's the most important uh, quadrant? It's the, the tasks that are really important but not urgent. These are the most important tasks. So, because we, we have control over them, we still have time to work on them. And what are these important but not urgent things? It's about our self-development. It's about uh, it's about trust. It's about uh, teamwork, and it's about uh, uh, investing in uh, in uh, in our uh, uh, resilience. So that's actually what is important but not urgent. Because when time uh, comes, so we will need them. So uh, that's actually what's what's important. And we we talk about not just organizational and anti-fragile organizations, we talk about also anti-fragile leaders. They, uh, what characterizes anti-fragile leaders is this, they keep really st uh, stepping out of their comfort zone, keep challenging themselves and putting themselves permanently in stressful situations. So, and this is exactly what I mean by the invisible thing. So the visible is what, is rationality plans, KPIs, it's not about that, no. When crisis uh, hit, it's not about these things because as we said, crises are not really uh, predictable. Uh, they change uh, the gambling rules, the, the, the game rules, uh, and they stay for, for so long. So we need more than that. We need faith, we need trust, we need passion. We need self-esteem, so that's the invisible thing. And it's not just about the leader, it's about not, not me as a leader, you as a team, but it's about us, how we can create this all together. And I leave you, I leave you with this uh, video. So this is my last gift to you. Interesting video, so let me... Do you see the video or not? No, not yet. Not Are you playing it now? Okay. Yeah, I'm playing it, so I'll uh, reshare my, my screen. We still see the slides. Okay, so I'll share the screen. So it's a video of two minutes. I hope you see my screen now. You see it? Yes. Yes, so we see your screen. One of the great leaders and uh, uh, just uh, listen to uh, what he's saying. It's really amazing. It's going to hit you in the head with a brick. I was lucky. I found what I love to do early in life. Waz and I started Apple in my parents' garage when I was 20. We worked hard, and in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. We just released our finest creation, the Macintosh, a year earlier, and I just turned 30. And then I got fired. How can you get fired from a company you started? What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone, and it was devastating. I really didn't know what to do for a few months. I felt that I had let the previous generation of entrepreneurs down. I was a very public failure and I even thought about running away from the valley. But something slowly began to dawn on me. I still loved what I did. We are gonna make it or break it. 
based on whether we can provide products to higher education and services and relationships to higher education that no one else provides. And I think we ought to spend 100% of our time thinking about that. And if we can't do that, then we ought to go broke. And so I decided to start over. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods in my life. During the next five years, I started a company named Next, another company named Pixar, and fell in love with an amazing woman who would become my wife. I'm pretty sure none of this would have happened if I hadn't been fired from Apple. It was awful tasting medicine, but I guess the patient needed it. Sometimes life's gonna hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is gonna fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. So keep looking, don't settle. Wow, what an important message that says leaves us with. Thank you so Thank much you. for your presentation and Thank your sharing. You. Yeah. Uh, uh, in 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 summary, to bring this uh, session to an end, what I would want to appreciate is that you actually demonstrated what it could mean for a leader to be in some kind of crisis. So uh, that is really an endorsement of the topic that you spoke on. So we've been through a crisis, yeah? <laughs> yes, total crisis. But we are here, we are at the end, and we have realized one thing that mastering a growth mindset can be pretty tricky isn't it now but it is still worthwhile taking all these efforts and some game changes which you have summarized for us with this new terminology called anti-fragile leaders so that that's well done and then there were three takeaways which um, i think all of you would lo uh, love to uh, hear in summary the first one is about the crises are going to be part of our life just like a season they are here but because they are here they bring us to the next thing which is growth and the next next lesson that well, a summary that i have picked up is that when there is a crisis it is neither positive or negative it is what is the meaning that we want to give it so that that is how we should face it and the third one which you emphasize with the use of Steve Jobs video was really how at the end of the tunnel, we do not see more. We don't see the light. But sometimes when we are going through the crisis, we have to start believing in some kind of trust that yes, there will be light at the end of this tunnel, but that trust is not enough. What is actually foundationally needed is bringing in the faith. When we have faith, we can keep going and going until all odds, as Steve Jobs says, till you find it, don't settle. So thank you so much, uh, guys. <laughs> A really, really inspirational uh, conversation here where you have brought us to think about how during this invisible moments of time that there is a need for a leadership mindset which you leave us with with anti-fragile fantastic thank you so much for your uh thank sharing. you and many applause for all thank of you. you everybody thank you thank you so much for everyone for being here and uh, now it's time for our next speaker to come on board so over back to you 